Hey guys, what's going on? It's Hey Coach Ryan, episode 11. I'm Coach Ryan Knapp. This is Rosie. So we know we have two dogs, and Jessica and I both live in our, in our apartment. Uh, we also have a cat. This is Rosie. Uh, Pace, our youngest dog, is obsessed with her, but uh, she's generally hiding. She just comes out when the dogs are gone. Uh, we're going away tomorrow for Thanksgiving, so Rosie gets to come out and play. Huh, Ro? Yeah, she's a good cat. Uh, okay, go on, Ro. <laughs> I figure I'll introduce her. Um, okay, so episode 11, we're going to talk about running cadence. This came up in a conversation with David Hayes today. And sometimes I pull the Hey Coach Ryan questions from conversations that I want to expand upon because I think they're really good and that we should have a larger conversation about them. David's question was simple. Does, is running cadence impacted by speed or pace? So if you run faster, is your cadence higher? If you run lower, slower, is your cadence going to be lower? Um, now I'm going to make some assumptions about running form and um, put in some um, stereotypes about running form or things that I think about form that I'll explain later on in a video. It's not about that. It's we're going to talk about cadence, but in order to understand cadence, we this I want people to understand why cadence is important for me and why I think you know we should talk about this. So what is running cadence? Cadence is simply measured in the amount of steps you take per minute. One, two, three, four. Those added up over one minute gives you a number. It could be 150, it could be 170, whatever you want, okay? That is your running cadence. Now, why does this matter? Why do we care about this? Well, in 1984, Dr. Jack Daniels um, went to the Olympics and studied, I believe it was the 1500, and I should know this, but I believe it was the 1500. He studied a group of 46 elite runners and he looked at what their cadence was during their event. And Daniels found that one of those runners, only one of those runners was below 180 beats or 180 steps per minute. So he surmised that 180, that this number is really important and that your running cadence should be about 180 steps per minute. Now, when we look at that, we can look at a couple different things. They were elite runners, they were running at race pace, so it may, so it may have been higher uh, you know, the, the elites definitely might have been running at a higher cadence than is normal, but 180 has become kind of ingrained in running as this cadence that you want to be at. And some proponents of barefoot running and chi running in that subscribe to a higher cadence no matter what the pace is. So this, <laughs> Rosie's hitting the thing. So this pace, this cadence is when we're talking about higher or lower, this is kind of the benchmark that we want to have. Whether that's right or not, this is just what we measure it off of. Now, why is cadence important? What do we want to look at it for as an everyday runner? Overstriding is not what we want to do when we run. Overstriding is bad. Okay, I'm going to make, and I'll talk about this later on in a form video, but here are the statements I'm going to make. Okay, so overstriding is bad. We don't want our heel to land all the way out here. We want our heel to land closer to the center um, of mass. And what that means is that in order to do that, the easiest way is to increase cadence because anecdotally and through research, if someone has a, if someone overstrides, they generally have a very low cadence. You can increase their cadence. It helps to get their foot in a little bit closer to the center of mass. And so you solve this. And if you believe that overstriding and landing like this is bad, then you can increase this and that works out well. Okay. We'll talk about this more when we talk about running form. So now to David's question, if we're running faster, does our cadence increase? If we're running slower, does our cadence decrease? And yes, I can talk about this in two ways. One, I can talk about this anecdotally because I've looked at running form. I've done running form analysis at the running store shoes I've worked at and I've done it with my clients. And I can even talk to David because I did it with specifically with David. David came out to our apartment and we did, I did an analysis with him on the treadmill and we looked at increasing his cadence and we increased his cadence and he actually got rid of a couple little nagging injuries that he had, which is good because he was kind of doing this being out here. But yeah, if you are running faster, your two things are going to happen, okay? Your, your um, steps per minute, your cadence, which is in um, green here, is going to increase, and your stride length is going to increase as well. Now, I didn't put any um, numbers for stride length, but just you know, know that basically this is lower, this is smaller stride length, and this is a larger stride length. Okay, if someone's running, say, and this is just data that I added here, but this is the general plot that you get. If someone's running at a 10 minute pace, they might have 160 
160 cadence. But as they start to go faster and faster and get up to say like a six minute mile or five minute mile, now all of a sudden they're above 180 and they're at 190 or even 200. Some guys are above 200. But that graph happens. For some people, it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit less. So someone, you may have someone that's a little bit higher that their nine minute mile, they're actually up around like 170 or 180. But you really don't, you're not generally going to see someone 180, 180, 180 because it's, it's tough to go at 180 beats per minute when you're at 11 minute mile or 10 minute mile. You're really just like, like pitter patter, pitter patter. And it's almost less efficient to do that. Now this is anecdotally certainly what I've seen in working with my runners, but there was a paper that came out in 2000 by uh, Peter Wyand and I was saying your last name right, I'll link to it. And it was in the Journal of Applied Physiology um, and it was in 2000. And he came out and basically looked at what, what, like how do you get faster as a runner? Like what is important? How do you get a faster top speed? And the graph when he did stride length and, uh, and cadence with elite runners, was this, and you can do this with elite runners or non-elite runners. If you ask someone to run faster, they will they will increase their stride and they will hit the ground more times per minute. That's how they get faster. Um, it's just how you'll how we do it as humans, and we also hit we also push into the ground harder. But that's a conversation for another day. So yeah, don't be surprised that if you're so this, this is a long answer for yes. Don't be surprised that if you're running at a faster pace your cadence increases and your stride length increases. And if you're running at a slower pace, that your stride length decreases and your cadence decreases. But when we're down here and we're at 160 beats per minute and we're running at a slower pace, we don't, we don't wanna be doing this, all right? We don't wanna be doing the overextending. So we need to keep it tucked in. So it might be a little bit higher, like I, like I drew with this black, black line here, but it's going to differ based on your, based on the person, you know, based on your leg length, based on lots of different factors can have um, an impact on this. So cadence does change with your, with pace. Um, but we want to be cognizant of what our cadence should be or what's, um, not even what our cadence should be, what is optimal for us and where that falls on this chart. You know, I'm going to argue that no one is down at 150 beats per minute if we're running or steps per minute. That's not going to be optimal more than likely for 99% of the people running. Probably wanna be a little bit higher than that. But if you're going up into an easy conversational zone two pace, I would argue that you wanna be somewhere around 180. If you're going up to like 5K, 3K, you know, 1K pace, then yeah, you're probably gonna be much, uh, much higher than that. All right, so that's a discussion kind of why we're looking at cadence um, in general. And we looked at how, why it's important. We looked at how we measure it. We looked at how the correlation is between stride length and how the correlation is between pace. Uh, all right, and then we'll talk about running form <laughs> later video. Uh, all right, so that, uh, that's that. If you have any questions about cadence, stride length, stride rate, uh, go ahead and ask it uh, in the comments. I'm also going to link to a couple awesome articles that detail this more, which I think are really, uh, really great. And I'll link to that paper that I talked about as well. Uh, so as always, if you have questions, ask them with the hashtag HeyCoachRyan, uh, and I'll be sure to get to them. Uh, you also can email me or get in touch with me however you want. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll be back soon with episode 12. And as always, have a great day.